Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host Jack and we are still working on post installation of Windows 7 um, some post installation tips and tricks on what we need to do to get our computer ready to start loading all that great software on the computer and start actually using the software um, so we want to get that next setup done what I want to talk to you about on this particular video is just two things first if you remember in the opening video, uh, if you could see it when I was formatting the hard drives or partitioning hard drives, we made two different partitions. It's still one physical device in the computer, one hard drive in the computer, but we have two actually different uh, partitions or pieces of pie, if you will, on that hard drive. Now, let's go into computer here. I'm so glad they took out all that my stuff, weren't you? my computer my videos my pictures sounds so one-sided huh so um so uh what would you call that non-sharing type person um, anyway but uh now everything's just called what it is it's computer it's videos uh pictures makes more sense here's what happens folks we have that one disc okay there's one disc there now if you see the C drive, remember we made that almost 100 gigabytes to load all of our Windows on. And if you look on here, we loaded Windows 7, we still have 86.4 gigabytes free. That's an awful lot of room. But I'm going to be loading all my software in there. Remember, I have Photoshop elements to load onto my computer. Um, I now do video, so I'm going to load uh, Premiere elements on here. And we're going to load all that great software on here. And, you know, you're going to load um, Office, like an open Office, if you want a free uh, Office, Microsoft Office alternative. It's called Open Office. Or you're going to load Microsoft Office on your computer. So all that software is going to be loaded on the C drive. And the reason I tell people to do this, is if we have to reload Windows, we can reload our software. That's not a big deal. Just keep your disks, folks. Don't throw those things in the drawer, stick them in a cupboard. I've seen people put them in shoe boxes and get all scratched up and oh, what a mess. So make sure you save your original disks and the key codes and put them in a safe place. Then we created this disk over here called the D drive. Now, um, we don't want to change the color schemes right now. We're going to let that go. So we have the D drive, but we can't use it. You see there's no bar graph on it. It doesn't tell us how much is free because remember, we didn't format that. We just said we'll do that after. But what happens is, being we loaded or we partitioned the drive there uh, in the actual install, what happened was it came up the normal order. C is normally your root driver where Windows would be loaded. Uh, we can double click and open that. You can see right here Windows is loaded there, and program files is loaded there, and your user files. All right. But if I double click S, yes, look, I get this error. Uh, do you want to format it now? Windows needs to format the disk before you can use it. Because we didn't format it, and then I get this crash. D is not accessible. The volume does not have a recognizable file system on it because it's not formatted. It's not ready to go. Click OK. You could also right click on this. We can go to Properties. And in Properties, you can see there's no free space because it's not formatted. Windows has no idea what you left on that disk. You can go to Tools. And we can actually do some uh, error checking and stuff on here, right? Uh, we could defrag it. We could back it up if it was an actual drive. But it's not an actual drive. So what we need to do first on this drive is you need to either double click it and just format it here. Or uh, I'm more of a right click kind of guy, you'll notice. I like to right click. Click on format. Either way you want to do it, it's going to bring up this next menu. Now, as you can see here, it says 833 gigabytes. Remember, it's a one terabyte drive. And there's always some uh, hard drive space left out for system files and whatnot. Now, folks, I know if you're old school, uh, you, this used to be FAT32 or FAT. <clears throat> NTFS is what you want. It's the uh, NT file system or NTFS. It's the most secure right now for Windows. And I know if you're a hacker out there, you're, you're laughing at me. Um, you can probably break into this thing in several seconds. But anyway, that's okay. 
Um, and if you're not, don't be scared of that. If you, if you have your routers and your passwords and everything, you're okay. Um, and we're going to show you some uh, encryption type software later on down the road working with Windows to help you encrypt file systems if you're really, really nervous and scared of something. This allocation unit size, you can change this uh, if you know what you're doing. I suggest leave it the way it is. Don't mess it up. Now, you see his name, local disk? That's what will come up here on our drive. See where it says local disk here? Well, we want to change that. I like to call that drive, uh, you could either call it storage or data or files, maybe for your files. Uh, I kind of just call it my data drive because that's where all my storage is going to, all my um, important work files. When I do these videos, I store them on there. Um, when I do all that different stuff, I store them in that particular hard drive, so I just make that my data storage. We're going to do a quick format. What that allows us to do, some schools teach not to do quick format. I don't understand their philosophy. Maybe they just want to make it harder on students when they're coming out of computer school and saying, um, damn, you know, take all day to format your hard drive. Maybe they're thinking these guys are going to come out and work by the hour. I don't know, folks. I mean, the way I look at them on salary, the more I get done, the better I feel. So I do a quick format. And the difference is, is the computer hard drive kind of keeps formatting in the background. If you turn this off, it will sit and format the whole entire hard drive. And that just doesn't make sense. It makes it usable fast, so that's the philosophy behind it. Turn on quick formatting. I teach it to all my interns. I think it's a wonderful thing. Click on start. Again, it's going to warn you. Oh, if you erase this disk, everything's going to be lost. That is even kind of a far-fetched thing. It's kind of not true. Uh, we've accidentally had people, interns, come in and format a hard drive and found out later that there were some important documents on there that we've actually recovered. So it's kind of a far-fetched thing. Um, they're just warning you where you're not going to see it without some recovery tools. So another uh, thing I wanted to throw out there to you. Click OK. We're going to actually format up this disk. Look how fast that is. Formatted. Because you quick formatted. It's a quick format. Boom, it's formatted. It's ready to go. All right. I get excited. I'm sorry. That's just anybody who's been watching my videos for a while knows who I am and what I do. I don't quite understand this. Use uh, speed up my system. I think what it does, it kind of installs that ready boost on that partition. Don't do that. That's kind of a waste. If you have enough RAM in your computer, you see my computer here has been moving along pretty good. I got four gigabytes of RAM. Um, just out of something to, to throw out there to you with these installs. 32-bit operating system does not read anything more than 3 gigs of RAM. So if you load your computer up with 16 gigs of RAM and you're like, I got a kick-in system, and you load a 32-bit operating system, guess what? It's only kicking 3 gigs of byte of RAM, so don't uh, get too crazy there. You'd have to learn to load the 64-bit version. Um, I didn't, obviously, because I don't have it. Uh, so... But if you're buying Windows and you're out there, you're going out to get Windows 7, look at the 64-bit operating system if you have more than 3 gigs of RAM. All right, this thing keeps giving me warnings. Here, let's just shut this off. We'll fix that later. All right, we're going to open this folder up now. And now we see we actually have a hard drive. It says uh, this folder, this hard drive is totally empty. And look, now what we have up here, we actually have that bar graph. We have 833 gigabytes free of 833 gigabytes. So that is actually how you format the drive. So that's already formatted. Now I want to talk to you just briefly here without making this video too long. I want to talk to you about uh, ordering your drive letters. Now the reason I say that is, here's a floppy disk drive that I don't even really have. I have a memory card reader in my computer. I don't have a floppy disk drive. Uh, here's E, here's F. So what I wanted to show you now was where you find those drive letters. Can you change it? If this gets messed up, um, and what I mean by messed up, in your computer, or in my mind, the way I do things is, C is my root drive. It always has Windows on it. I know this because I've been doing this for a long time. D is my storage drive. That's my data. So it, it, that could be another hard drive in your computer or what have you. And let's say we do that right now just for curiosity purposes. So let's say we throw another hard drive in the computer. Well, C, D, E, and F are taken up, drive letters. That next hard drive, 
what's going to happen is it's going to make it G. Now, is that a problem? Not really, but I, just out of the way things, the alphabet is written, and the way my mind works, I want my hard drives to be my first letters and my CD-ROM drives to be anything after that. The next thing is to check your CD-ROM drives. Okay, if you have two CD-ROM drives, this is actually a DVD-ROM or a reader, and this is my DVD burner. Now, you right-click on it. The best way I can tell you to do is hit eject. It's going to open up the tray and look at your computer. That E drive should be the top drive. And the next letter down should be a drive below that. So hopefully that helps you out. That's just the way it kind of works. So we have E set up. We throw another hard disk in there, and the hard disk says, oh my, it's letter G. You don't like it. You can reload Windows. That's a, that's a definite uh, solution. But take it from a computer guy. It's not the best solution. Let's close this. Go to your Start menu. Right click on my, uh, my, I'm sorry, right click on computer. Let's go down to manage. And here you go. If you look right here under disk management, this is really cool. Works really nice. Disk management, you're going to see your C drive. See where it says boot, page file, crash dump, blah, blah, blah. Uh, D drive, or the data, that's what we just created, right? It's healthy. It's a uh, primary type partition. That's the system reserve partition. Don't mess with that one. Just leave it alone. But let's say we went down here, and we went to the, C, uh, the next drive here. Those are all my removable media drives, so there's no media in those right now. So we go down, you got your C and D on disk 1. Remember, we have one hard drive. We broke it down to partitions. Let's go down here a little bit to the CD-ROM drive. So you added a hard drive and you're like, okay, that's C, that's D. My hard drive come up as G, you don't like it. All you have to do is go down there to that first CD-ROM drive. If you right-click on it, look what it says here, change drive letter and paths. Click on that. You can change this drive letter and assign it to anything you want. Here's all the letters. I suggest if you're going to use E for that next hard drive, <clears throat> Just change this one. You're going to actually change it to, you could change it to M. It doesn't really matter. But what's going to happen is you're going to want these drives. Uh, then you'll click OK. It's going to warn you. Click OK on the warning. I'm not going to do that part because I don't want to change my drive letters, obviously. It's going to change uh, this one to, like, say, uh, we'll change E to F. No, you can't because F is already here. So you have to change change this one first. I'm sorry. It's easier to change this one first to G. That would free up the letter F. Then go back up and change this one to letter F. Because if not, you're going to have to change these three or four times. It just makes it a little easier if you do this one first to the lowest letter, this one to the next letter, and then that'll allow you to take that new hard drive and change its drive letter to the next letter in sequence. I hope that's not too confusing. If it is confusing, drop me an email. You can always email me with your questions at jackstechcorner at gmail.com. I will help you out. Or go to jackstechcorner.com and look at the forums. I will definitely help you out on the web forums also. Well, I hope that helped you a little bit with some more post-installation uh, type stuff that you have to do when you install Windows 7 or any operating system, really. You have to get in there. You have to know how to work the, the Windows out. You have to know how to do things uh, like that, right-clicking and look at some settings. It's going to save you a couple hundred bucks. You know, you take this thing out to, uh, you know, the buddies out there at the Geek Squad. They charge you $199 to bring it in. They'll charge you $400 to load Windows 7 plus the uh, cost of Windows 7. You can do this yourself, folks. Just pick it up off the shelf. Take it home. Uh, save these videos somewhere. I don't know exactly how to tell you. Hopefully, you have a laptop or something, maybe, to watch these videos as you're doing your install. Follow them and take your time. And uh, I'll talk to you very soon here in the next video as I um, work at my post installing now, putting software on this computer and getting my other hard drive data moved over. And it's going to take a while, but uh, you know I think it's worth it. Right now everything's running great. The system looks good. Um, yeah, the hard drive I've been having a lot of trouble with my old hard drive with a lot of banging and clanking. And if you hear your hard drive doing that, buy a new hard drive. It's going. It's going bad. 
It's going to happen to you, and you're going to say, oh, crap, I should have listened to Jack. But you didn't. So, Okay, I'll see you back here very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now.